Hey, what's up guys? Stanley here bringing you guys another Tower Fantasy video. Today we're going to be doing something a bit different. We're actually going to be talking about why I think a global release might be coming sooner than we're expecting. Now, nothing has been outright confirmed yet, but I think using the tools we've got and all the information that we have, I think we can be able to piece some things together pretty quickly. First of all, let's talk about Perfect World Games. They're the publisher of Tower of Fantasy, and they also own Hotta Studio, the developers of Tower of Fantasy. Hotta Studio pretty much exists to produce Tower of Fantasy. They exist to make Tower of Fantasy only at the moment. And as we can see, if I scroll, this isn't their first rodeo. They have plenty of other games made. They have tons of games here. This isn't their first time making a game. But if we look at their new slash trending games list, something seemed to have changed over the past couple of years, couple of months, something culturally at Perfect World. If you look at their current popular games, you can kind of see a same general format. A lot of these games have the same art style that you've come accustomed to seeing and recognizing with Chinese mobile games, or even just Chinese games in general. A lot of these games look the same, they might play the same, and that's because this is Perfect World's bread and butter. They do this well. They do this very, very well. A lot, actually. <laughs> So obviously, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They'll just do the same thing over and over and over again until it just stops making the money. It would shoot themselves in the foot if they don't do that. Games like the ones I just scrolled through are pretty much the bread and butter of Perfect World. These are the games that they love to make because they know it makes them a ton of money. But something changed. Look at their upcoming games list. Stylistically, it's not really the same as what you would come to expect or come to get used to. Tower of Fantasy, different style. Code Ma, totally different style. Code R, we can't even tell what it looks like, but automatically it looks like a different style. Code Name X, no clue what this is, but the fact that it mentions a Japanese hall level console game makes it sound like this is also going to be a global release. Project Prism also looks like it's going to be a global release. A lot of these games look designed to be appealing to global audiences, whereas Perfect World kind of knows what the Chinese audience wants, at least visually. They know the kind of games that do well there and make them a lot of money. It's pretty obvious they've done this for a while, they've been around as a company for a while. But when you look at this new games release list, there's one, two, three, maybe four, five, six games that look like they are pretty much gearing up to be a global release kind of title. And I have a feeling that this has to do with MiHoYo. Seeing the commercial success of MiHoYo with them releasing Honkai and then Genshin Impact and it blowing up in the West, I think Perfect World wants to kind of do the same thing, which is why a lot of their newer titles are kind of out of the branch of what they typically do. I want to remind all of you that Perfect World has three subsidiary groups. Perfect World Games for China, Perfect World Entertainment for North America, and Perfect World Europe for Europe. Perfect World Entertainment in North America doesn't really do a lot at the moment. They do publish like AA and independent titles. Their most popular one being Remnant from the Ashes. It has a very high review score on Steam and it's pretty much on literally every platform you can play it on. However, at the moment, they aren't really doing too much. They're just kind of sitting around and I feel like that's because they're gearing up for a culture shift at the company. Perfect World knows that they're not going to make a lot of money publishing these double-A or independent titles. So instead of doing that, if they decide to port their titles that already exist in China over to the West, maybe they can see the same success MiHoYo did, and I think that's what they're thinking. And I mean, it's working. If you look at this, 5 million people have signed up for Tower of Fantasy updates on their website. It's definitely working. The risk that they're taking here is paying off for sure. And in fact, Tower of Fantasy literally has 20 times the amount of pre-registrations than this game has, which is at 600,000 right now. So they know that this game is massively popular just in general. And let's be honest here, Perfect World totally knows what they're doing. They've worked with Valve to work on Steam China. They've literally published tons of games before. They know what they're doing. And when it comes to at least Tower of Fantasy, I think this is their first step in trying to see how far they can go in garnering a Western audience from a game. And you can tell they know it. They see that this game is their most popular upcoming title. For example, Perfect World worked with Square Enix to publish and develop Final Fantasy Awakening, which took about 
a year-ish to launch in the United States. Typically, if a game is doing all right, doesn't have any super commercial success, it does pretty good, but it's not doing too bad, it's very average. It takes about a year for the game to come out to the West. It took about a year for Final Fantasy Awakening to come out to the West. It took about a year for Punishing Grey Raven to come out in the West. Kind of, It goes on, so on and so forth. Average time to wait is between 9 months to 12 months for like an average game to come out to the West if they don't have like a super big rich publisher that has a ton of money. But if you look at Tower of Fantasy, they have literally nearly combined across all websites 1.6 million pre-registrations. <laughs> A lot of games domestically don't even get this. The game's registration numbers on Billy Billy outperform the game's pre-registrations officially on their own websites here. So this is saying a lot about Tower of Fantasy. Perfect World has the money, they have the resources, they have literally everything they would ever need to publish this game to the West as quickly as they can. They have the publishing experience, they have publishing studios in two different continents, they have literally everything they could ever ask for. And especially with the devs saying that they were heavily considering a global release as an option, you can kind of tell where their head's at. I want to remind everyone that Tower of Fantasy was in development before Genshin Impact was fully released. And if you were here, you do remember this video that they made where they showed updated graphics. You can see what they made, what they look like, whatever. And you can tell that the artistic direction of the game was way different prior to Genshin Impact's global release. And I'm pretty sure that Perfect World looked at Genshin and saw, oh my god, we can print money if we just change the style and the way the game looks to kind of play into that audience. Because Genshin had a large fan base and did immediately after release. Again, here's the other video of their graphical update. You can really tell that after Genshin Impact released that they were literally rushing to put the game into a different design. And I mean, again, they work very fast and I guarantee that Perfect World have been compensating them very well, but the game looks not completely different, but very, very different as if somehow something inspired them to make the game look different. And I think it's the fact that Genshin had such a large commercial success outside of China that they were thinking, if we make this game look as good as Genshin does, then we can probably have a global release that comes somewhere close to how the popularity of Genshin was. Again, Perfect World seems to be taking a completely different direction. They seem to be doubling down a bit on global releases, global games, putting games out in China and then putting them out in the West. Because let's be honest here, a game like this, or 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 a game like this, they're not your bread and butter. They're not what's gonna make you the most money. They know what makes them the most money, which is why they make so many different MMO games or games that look the same. They know because it makes them money. But games like Tower of Fantasy exists to appeal to Western demographics. And I think Tower of Fantasy is that big test for them to see if we put this game out, how will the rest of the world respond? So, this leads me to my final point. We have a couple of options, I think. We have the option of them releasing it in China first, and then seeing what to do after they run the numbers. So they release the game in China first. They see, okay, we have a lot of downloads. We're going to start working on the global release right now. And then we're going to push everything out. Option number two is release it in China first, but have already done some work on the global release prior to the Chinese release. So working on global will be a bit faster and it'll come out a bit quicker. And my third option, which is probably honestly my favorite option. And I think if this were to happen, the most realistic they delay the game in China and release it globally in the summer or sometime next year. They already said they were heavily considering a global release. The story is practically done and the only thing that needs to be changed is quality of life or visuals. And although it'll really make the Chinese fans angry in terms of like release popularity, releasing the game everywhere is probably the best thing they can do. They haven't even really confirmed <laughs> the actual release date. And with the beta being about a week and a half off of the rumored release date, it would only make sense for them to be like, 
hey guys, we're delaying the game for a couple of months so that way we can put the game out for everyone at the same time. Again, on average, it takes about a year for a game to come out to the West. But Hotta Studio has a ton of numbers to prove to Perfect World that it, that it is worth putting the money in and giving them the resources to port the game out way faster. And if Perfect World wills it, they can probably put this game out in like three to four months. The shortest I've seen is about six months, I think, for a Chinese game to come to the West. If I was Perfect World and I saw that this game is getting 20 times the amount of attention of the other titles you have, one of which is literally working with Square Enix. I want to remind you, this one is literally working with Square Enix. Then, I don't know what to tell you. They would be shooting themselves in the foot if they were not to push this game out as quick as possible. They have the studios, they have the publishing companies, they have the resources, they know how to put these games on literally every platform, Epic, PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, Windows. They know literally every trick in the book. They know exactly what to do. I'm wholeheartedly confident that one, we're going to get a global release. This game exists to be global. It literally design wise, I feel like it panders to a global audience. No doubt about that. And number two, it's going to come quicker than we think. If I were to guess, pure speculation here. Announcement, February or March. Early 2022, I think they're going to be like, Hey guys, the game's released in China now, and we're going to release the game for everyone else this summer. Or they're just going to be like, we're going to delay the game and release it for everyone this summer. Getting licenses on other platforms, not difficult. Getting all this stuff done on other platforms, not difficult. My, my headphones just fell. If they really want to, they can go to E3 and do a marketing campaign over the summer and be like, this game's coming out literally next month. Closed beta for everyone coming soon. We don't know, but I am just excited to see where the game goes. Perfect World knows how popular this game is. They know how popular this game is. No other game that they have currently has this many pre-registrations. Especially for it to be literally ranking so high on TapTap. -tap. It's literally ranked third. It was ranked second at peak, but it's literally ranked third. Like... Tower Fantasy didn't necessarily have that big of an audience to start with. Sure, it had Perfect World backing it, but remember, it was just another game. It was because of global fans and even domestic fans coming together to actually rally behind this game that made it so popular. To conclude, a game like Tower of Fantasy would do amazingly in the West. It's pretty obvious. The elevator pitch for this game, which is just sci-fi Genshin but an MMO, always works. Every time I tell people, yeah, this is just Genshin, but an MMO, their ears perk up. It's like, oh, an MMO? Oh, that's interesting. I think that this game is not only coming to the West, it's coming way quicker than we think. And I would not be surprised if the game came out early, mid-2022. Maybe they're working on it right now. Maybe they're just going to say we're releasing it in China right now, and literally in a month it's coming to the West. It wouldn't be a really smart idea because they have a Tesla game and stuff, but... I am, I'm feeling confident about this. I feel it. I feel it. But anyway, guys, tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I'll be sure to read and respond to your comments. This has been a long video, a long time. Let me know where your thoughts are about this. And again, I'll see you guys around. Later.